says it's not quite six o'clock yet. No, um, now it says it's six o'clock. We're live, but are we live? You mean I've been talking all this time? Yeah, but there's something. No, there's a. There's a. Hi, this is Nancy with On Point TV. We and we're not live. We need to stop. Athena, you see what I'm saying? There's a big black line. Yeah. Is it actually showing? Skip. Oh, no. Shoot. Oh, one moment, please. Scarlett says she sees me. Yeah, I understand that. I'm not saying that we don't see you. Okay. Yes, it's there. All right, we're just going to leave it there. I don't know what it is. We're just going to leave it there. Okay. All right. So I think we're live. And maybe I'll edit that whole part off. <laughs> Hi, this is Nancy with On Point TV and Quilting with Nancy. And we just started our recording and we noticed that right over here is like a gray line. So just don't look in that direction, okay? Try and look more central and then you won't notice it because, yeah, it won't bother me at all. So thank you all for joining me again. We actually had done this video actually last week and we had not so much technical difficulties as we had operator issues kind of going on. So this is how this is going to work today. I'm going to talk you through some of the things that are coming up. Um, and then I'm going to take you through how to make the multi-stripped mitered border. So if we go all the way over to this edge, it kind of is over here, you can see that this has a mitered border. And I'll show you some other quilts that have it, the Paradise Lone Star version of it that has it. And the idea of the multi-strip mitered border is when you're putting borders on a quilt, you need to measure that quilt to know what size and length to cut your borders. And I've got quite a few different videos on the channel that will show you exactly what I mean by that. And if you have any trouble finding those videos, send me an email. Where do you send the email to? Quiltingwithnancy at gmail.com. All right. And then I can help direct you to that. So I'm really particular about how I put borders on, that there's a lot of measuring. Well, when you want to do a multi-strip border, if you're going to do, you know, we've got six on this one, you'd have to do the quilt measuring, the pinning all to the quilt, carrying the big quilt, putting on border number one on all sides. Then you'd have to do the same thing for border two, all sides, three, all sides, and so on and so forth. So I love when I'm doing a multi-strip border to make it a mitered border because you will see how we construct the strips individually to begin with, all right? So that's what we're gonna get to. But let me talk to you about just a couple of things that are showing, that are coming up. So in April, April 12 through 16, we are having our first ever On Point On The Lake Quilting With Nancy retreat. So this will be happening on the coast of Lake Michigan. So we are here in Grand Rapids and it's gonna happen over here in Grand Haven, which is one of the absolute cutest um, kind of Michigan resort towns that there is. It's got a beautiful pier and the lake of course is fabulous. Well, this place where we're having the retreat is literally on the lake. You can walk right down the steps to be in the lake if you wanted to. And I've been there for a wedding before. It's got these beautiful um, houses too. So if you want more information about that, if you just go back, I think like a week and a half, just some of the most current videos, I did a live video showing you pictures of the retreat center, pictures of where you can stay if you choose to stay. If you live in West Michigan, you could actually drive in for the actual classes. April 12 through 16. So here is just a kind of little snapshots of what the projects will be. This is the Jack's chain. So this is constructed with these um, nine patch units. And then there is the hexagon and set in seams. And this will be the advanced version. So if when you saw that, your brain said, uh-uh, I ain't doing that then don't worry about it because there's other versions. This is the beginner version. So the idea that you can make the nine patches into a larger yeah. chain block, oops, chain block, and then there'll be a setting square. And this, of course, will be on point because everybody knows it looks better when it's on point right? And then there'll be an intermediate version. And the intermediate version will have a more intricate sashing on it. So there'll be three options 
as to what you can work on during the retreat. I'll be there the whole time. We'll have training, you know, the class in the morning and then some free time and, and trunk shows. And we might have some other um, professionals come in and teach some classes, but it kind of depends on how many people we get as to whether we do that. So hope that you're interested in that. It'd be really fun to have you. Do we have anybody? Yes, you are right. It does. It, Daniel, it does. It has such a wonderful, uh, adding a mitered border to your quilt will really give it that finished look. Second thing I want to tell you about is our next video series. So we are finishing up the snowflake right now. And our next video series will be the four crossings. So this is a book that I've been working on for about six months or more. It spent a lot of time in editing. My friend Cheryl in Washington State did a lot of the editing for me. And this is, and right now I'm actually teaching a class in, at Smith Owen Sewing Center in Grand Rapids, but this is what these two quilts will look like that book and so it'll be a lot i think there'll be maybe nine videos on this so bill's going to help me hold this up this is the pieced version of the four crossings quilt so starting with that center block that has a lot of different piecing techniques in it and then the chain blocks the crossing blocks rather and then square and a square and then a cool border on the side so that will be one of the options in the book that I'll be teaching. And then this is the second one. And this has blanket stitch applique, one of my absolute favorite things to do. So if we can do that. So this is the one that's on the cover. So this is with the blanket stitch applique. So is that high enough that you can see that, Athena? Okay, so that's the center. The chain cross, same crossing blocks, and then applique on the border instead of the square and square and the truth is that you could add and combine different ones to it so that will be what we'll start doing the recording on i'm hoping this will be a sunday afternoon thing but i'm not sure it might not even be live i might do all the recordings and put athena to work doing some editing so and athena's like all right we can do that all right so that's what will be coming up so for now Let's get back to what we've been working on, the Snowflake Lone Star and the other versions. So this is the second version of the Snowflake Lone Star. So when I first posted the Snowflake Lone Star, one of the ladies I used to work with, Kathy, right away popped up and said, that looks like a paradise flower. And I was like, she's right. It does. And um, in 2022, I was at the road to California in Long Beach. And when I was there, I remember walking to the beach one day and I took a picture of a paradise flower growing on the side of the road. And I'm like, okay, that's kind of amazing. And so that was when Kathy said that I was like, you are absolutely right, Kathy. So these and the snowflake Lone Star and the paradise flower Lone Star these patterns are e-patterns available on our website on point-tv. The links are below. If you go to the description in all this video, I've got links to that and I've got links to the fabrics and the tools that I'm using are in these collections um, on the firesidequilts.com. So if you go to www.firesidequilts.com, um, or follow the link, you'll see collections. And Laura's put together a collection for the snowflake, a collection for paradise, and oh, for the happy blooms, one of the videos that I did about a month or so ago, all right? So this is the paradise flower, all right? So this one is the same exact small diamonds as the snowflake Lone Star, but what makes it a little bit smaller, so maybe a little bit more doable. If you're looking at the snowflake and you're going, you're overwhelming me with this one, then consider the paradise flower. So with the paradise flower, the large diamonds are constructed of only two of each of the small diamonds. Now you could make the snowflake Lone Star smaller just by making two of each of those, but with the paradise, I did that on purpose. Um, and then here is the mitered border. Now I will be sewing, I've got one more corner to finish on here because part of the difficulty with doing these multi-strip mitered borders is when your quilt is larger, it makes the process a little harder, all right? So we're gonna be seeing this quilt again. Thank you, Bill. But where we are going to start is on this quilt. So the pattern, the paradise, 
Flower Lone Star comes with all the instructions for making what you just saw and a bonus miniature. Okay, so seriously, Scarlett writes that she saw a Paradise Flower. Oh, that's what you're working on right now. I thought you meant that you saw one. I'm like, oh my goodness. All right, so this is the miniature. Am I too close, Athena? Okay, the miniature version of the Paradise Flower. Now you see that this only has one diamond, but that diamond actually is even smaller. So in the instructions for the Paradise Flower, I tell you what, how much, what size fabric to cut for each section and all that. And then the miniature version, same idea, but the diamonds themselves are smaller. They're like three inches instead of five inches or four inches or whatever the other ones are, all right? Hi, Georgia. Hi, Fraser. Thank you very much from Ontario, Canada. And Roxanne is here, and Daniel's here, and Tammy's here. And okay, Winnie, we, my first thought was, and Winnie the Pooh is here. No, not we, I. <laughs> oh kind of elementary, that's me. <laughs> All right, so one thing that I did do different on the miniature I want you to see the back of it, and you will see what looks like I have left the paper on. I did not leave paper on, but I did leave the stabilizer on. These pieces are really quite small, so of course I needed to use my add an eighth ruler instead of the add a quarter ruler. And I was just thinking, you know what, I didn't want to tear off all the paper. But most importantly, I wanted to test out a product. There is a new product. I used to, for a lot of times, for a lot of different things, I would tell you to use the Ricky Tim Stable stuff. They're not making it anymore. They just decided, yep, we don't really care that Nancy likes teaching with that stuff and that she uses it so much and they never even asked me about it and they just discontinued it. So I went to the Bozel company and I asked Bozel if they could make this stabilizer. Well, the truth of the matter is, is it's just a, a cutaway, lightweight cutaway stabilizer, but it's packaged in the eight and a half by 11. And Bozel said, sure, we'll do that. Well, they've already done it. So it's on the market right now. Um, Fireside Quilts has some. Um, I've seen other stores that have had it. And so that's what I did this on. I made the copies onto the Creative Stable. It's called Creative Stable from Bozel comes 50 sheets that are all eight and a half by 11, all right? Which makes it really convenient for this project and if you're um, doing any of my English paper piecing projects. But I, I have a new one of those ones coming up too. The only thing that made it a little bit different, I don't wanna say difficult because it was really more different, is when it comes to, so this is one of the ones that's, this is the normal size one behind me. Normally when I come to the point where I have to fold on, maybe one of these lines, I will tell you that you have to tear the paper on the stitching line. Well, tearing the paper is super simple, all right? You just tear back the paper right on the stitching line. It's a no brainer, but doing it on this, I couldn't do that. I couldn't tear it. So I did have to take a pair of scissors and just snip these little teeny corner parts. Now, if all of these things that I'm talking about with paper piecing are going like, and then you're like, I don't even have a clue what she is talking about because you've never done paper piecing. You've never used the add a quarter ruler or the add an eighth ruler. Then you need to check back onto my paper piecing basics. So I have like a two or three part. Um, one of the most popular videos on my channel is the paper piecing basics. Check that one out. And guess what? If you have trouble finding it, all you have to do is send me an email to quiltingwithnancy at gmail.com and I'll send you the link. Okay, so this is where we are going to start today doing the border on the miniature quilt. Yes, Athena? Georgia has a question. Does yes. it dissolve? It does not dissolve. It turns into soft. So if you look back onto my English paper piecing by machine, and I have showed you that one quilted, at least I think I showed you that one quilted, but that one has that stabilizer underneath all of the fabric. I quilted it washed it. You can't hardly even tell it's there, but it does not go away. It does not ball up like if you left paper in the quilt. After a while, that paper would ball up inside. It doesn't. It is just this really light, soft layer of a polyester underneath. So it's perfect. It's kind of, if you think about when you buy a sweatshirt that maybe has an, you know, an embroidery on it, and the first time you wear it, it's got that stiff, the stiff white behind the embroidery. 
after you wash it a few times, what happens? It just gets softer and softer. So that's kind of the idea. Ah, she does remember that now. Good. I knew you were paying attention. All right. So we are ready to get to work. So I've already put three of the mitered borders on the miniature um, version of the paradise flower. And I'm ready to do my last one. Now, when you do the piecing on these, you're going to put however many strips together. So on this one, I put one inch strips because remember a miniature quilt, all the elements within a miniature quilt need to be miniature. So I made the first ones, first four, just be one inch. So they finished a half inch. What I want you to notice is here. The seams on this side are pressed up. The seams on this side are pressed down. So that's what you need to do. And I, can you see that it's actually going up and down? I can, it's kind of hard to tell, isn't it? Just yeah. trust me, these are going up, these are going down. So I will choose for the sides to go out and the top and the bottom to go down because you need it to happen that way so that you're able to get this fabulous intersection right there, which on the front of the quilt, of course, looks sublime, right? So the, how you do this, is you're gonna take your quilt, and I'm gonna be working with the small quilt, obviously. Okay? And I need to find out where the center of the quilt is and how wide the quilt is from the center to the edge. So I'll take the quilt, and this one's easy because he's so small, and I'm just gonna fold him in half. And I've already done this, but I'm gonna do it for you. Okay? And then I don't even have to use my measuring tape this time, I can just use my ruler. I'm gonna measure it. I'm gonna line that up first. There's the center. And this measures on the half, it measures seven and three quarter inches. So from the middle of the quilt top to the very edge of the quilt top is seven and three quarter inches. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to take my borders, and I do normally do all four borders at the same time. But I'm going to take my border strips that I've created fold them in half, and this is my narrowest one. And the idea, I guess I should have covered this, kind of jumped right over it. The idea when you're piecing your border strips is you're gonna piece the first strip about, you know, if my border is an inch long, if my border is gonna be an inch wide, I'll cut this strip about an inch longer than the border itself. And then continually adding whatever the thickness is of the border to the next strip, to the next strip, to the next strip. So it kind of has a stair stepping. Takes a little bit of math on that. So with that one, you wanna you know pull out your calculator. Then I'm going to take my ruler and I am lining it up here. Let me see if I can do it this way, but I'll have to turn it to cut it, all right? I actually go farther back. Can I go farther back? All right, yeah. how about right there? Right. So the quilt measured from the center to the edge measured seven and three quarter inches. I am now going to move this over one quarter of an inch short. So the idea is the mark that I'm going to make right here on the border. Can you see it? Or should we go to the um, ironing board? Yeah. The ironing board. All right, we're going to go to the ironing board because I'm seeing what you guys are seeing and I'm not seeing it. So, all right, time to exchange our cameraman. So we're going from Athena, the fabulous cameraman for things that are not too tall, to Bill, the fabulous cameraman. I'm sorry, Athena is a camera person. Bill is also a camera person. Bill's really tall, so he can do this without any issue, not having to get up on the ladder or anything. All right, so here we are on the ironing board. Oops, I better start that iron, getting it cooking. Okay, so we've got the quilt. All right, so I had taken the quilt, sorry, folded it in half so that from the center of the quilt to the edge of the quilt top, I had measured, and it was seven and three quarter inches. Can you see that, Bill? There we go. Now we can see it seven and three quarter inches. Okay. So now I'm going to take the actual border strip, fold it in half, and uh, oh, I'm sorry, I got to do it this way so I can do my cutting. All right. So now from 
the fold of the border over to here, seven and three quarter inches is how wide the quilt was. I am going to make a mark and cut a quarter of an inch smaller. So I'm gonna cut this, you might be able to see that one a little bit more, at seven and a half. One quarter of an inch smaller than the quilt on both sides. And then I'm gonna take my scissors and cut in a quarter of an inch. So it's important you have a good pair of scissors that can actually cut all the way in that quarter of an inch, which, because I'm reaching way over here, they didn't cut there. Now it did. All right. So I have now nipped in on my small border a quarter of an inch smaller than the quilt on each side. All right. Now I'm going to take my quilt itself. Oops. Yeah. Sorry, I gotta unfold it there. Okay. And this is the border that I'm gonna work on. On the two sides that are already done, you can actually even see the little nip right there that I already did on this one. All right. Now I'm gonna take and fold this border down and get it out of the way. And then I'm gonna put a pin in there. All right. And you can see here where I started a quarter of an inch from the edge, and we'll be doing that with, when we're putting on the border. Then I'm going to come to the other side, and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to fold this border out of the way. Now, when you're going around, you only have to do one until you get to this end. Sorry, I've got a loose thread here. There. All right. Now I'm going to take the border and put it down. Come over to the left side, please. Thank you. Okay. And here is my nip. Right there is the nip that I made. I need that to line up a quarter of an inch from the edge of the quilt. And so you can see here this cool little quarter inch of the quilt top. That means you've got it lined up properly. Try not to get too much into the camera face there. There. And put a pin there. Now I'm going to come to the other side and I'm going to do the same thing. Find my little nip fold it down. My nip is a little bit bigger I'm seeing here, but that'll be okay. I've got my little quarter inch square of quilt top showing, and I put in a pin, All right? Now I'm going to put pins throughout the quilt. Now on a long, long quilt like the snowflake, I'll bet you that quilt's maybe 80 inches. I probably put in, uh-oh, yeah. Bill just lost the camera. Can you hold it now? I don't know what happened. But Try to keep your fingers out. <laughs> um, that was odd. Now it's back. Be ready to catch it if it happens again. So anyway, when I was doing the Snowflake Lone Star, the large one, that, that is a ginormous quilt. And I will do a video where I'm quilting it because that really gets me. I can't wait to do it. I just don't know when I'll do it. It might actually have to be till next winter. Um, but when I did this pinning portion, I probably used, I don't know, 50, 50 pins. Um, because I'm obsessive about my borders being straight, and I think the only way to make it happen is to pin it. So I've got all of those pins in it, right? All right, now I'm going to go to the sewing machine. So I'm going to go around back a bill. Come on over here. All right, so Athena's going to come and be our camera person now. There. All right, so I have my regular foot on, and a little bit I'll put in my open toe. See a lot of dust down there too. I have my guidelines for quilting sitting here so that when my foot is down from needle position to the edge of my foot where the guidelines is, there is a scant quarter of an inch. Um, this is something that I use all the time. If this is the first time you've watched one of my videos, then you maybe have not seen this in process and how I do that. But all of my videos, I have the guidelines on there. And they're available at Fireside also. Now I'm going to start with the leader. So I'm just going to grab a little scrap of fabric. And then my needle has gone down and my presser foot has lifted. I am going to start sewing right here. I'm going to fold this out of the way. And remember that little square that I told you about? There he is, right there, right? I'm going to take and start sewing. Sorry, it's turning it around there. Pulling the little nip back, I'm going to start sewing on the edge. Is my hand totally in the way? Uh, yeah. Okay, there. All right. Till I get on there, then I can take that pin out. All right. Now I'm going to sew this seam with my scant quarter inch seam allowance. Whoops, got caught on there a smidge. And yeah, I'm 
prone to sew right over pins, especially when I'm doing things that need precision. Just take it nice and slow over your pins. Um, what you're not allowed to do is blame me if you sew over a pin and you hit it. You know what? You and your machine need to be as one, although this one, the pin is kind of bent, so that's not cool. Um, whether or not you sew over the pins is really a personal choice. When I go over them, I generally go over them slow. All right, now I'm to the end. I'm gonna pull this out again. There's my nip. There's that little quarter of an inch square of fabric. I'm gonna sew all the way off the end of that. And then when I get to the end of that, I'm gonna cut my thread. Now I could have sewed with a leader if I could have found one at this very second. All right, now I'm gonna take all my pins out and go back to the ironing board. So Bill is going to come and get the camera now. I think this is the only time we've ever used two camera people, is it? Uh, All right, so now we're back to the ironing board. This is the seam that I just sewed. There's the little quarter inch squares. Now I'm gonna flip this up and press it. And I'm gonna take these pins out, this guy out and this guy out. There, I'm gonna press this, keep that nice and flat. Then this guy will go that way. And this one will go this way, there we go. And then I'm gonna press that seam up toward the border, all right? That gurgling you hear, if you can hear it, that's my new iron. So I've got a reliable velocity iron. Um, this thing cranks out steam. I mean, look at it, it's like, you can give yourself a facial really, really easily. And when you take your hand off, the steam stops. Put your hand on, it starts to steam again. It's pretty awesome. And you can turn the steam off completely, all right? So at this point, the border is on and you see here my corners. I've got a, one going up and then one going to the side. It's time to create the mitered border. Now I could do it on this quilt and really it's quite easy. But one of the difficulties, if you'll come up here, please, Bill. One of the, end up, end up, move it up. There he is. <laughs> no, there she is. One of the problems or issues with doing a mitered border, especially on a large quilt, is getting the quilt to lay just just properly so that you can do the mitered border. So instead of cheating and doing it on the miniature, which is super duper simple, I'm gonna do it on the medium size. I'm not gonna do it on the snow big snowflake because I already did those once because I thought we were done with this, all right? So I'm gonna work on the medium size. So back up, Bill, but keep the camera on me, okay? All right, so here is the larger Paradise Flower Quilt. And here is the corner, just like we had with the miniature. All right, I've got it pinned there because I took that to a show just the other day. I was in Lakeview, Michigan. That was really nice knitting those ladies. All right, so there's my border. Now I'm gonna take the quilt and this is, I mean, this can get cumbersome. You're gonna be like, oh my gosh, I got too much quilt going on here. Fold the quilt on the diagonal. Now with the Lone Star, that's not so hard because the diamonds create the diagonal. So that's kind of nice. When you're doing a quilt that may not have that, you have to find the proper 45 degree angle going across the center of the quilt, all right? So now I have that folded on the diagonal. Now I'm gonna take it and flip it down onto my ironing board. Now you can show the ironing board, Bill. Okay, what's that? Why do you sew off the ender? I understand the reason is for a leader. Leader? Because usually my ender is my next leader. So if I sew off onto the ender, then it is set to be my leader on my next piece. So I don't have to pull another leader in. So, all right. So leaders and enders. It just, I used to just call them the pieces of fabric, but I've heard that other people in the quilting world call them leaders and enders. And I'm, all right, I conformed. I started calling them what they call them, all right? Other than that piece of fabric I put in the beginning of my fabric, my sewing so that the thread doesn't get caught. Sound good? Okay. All right. So here we are. We've laid the quilt down. I have folded it on the diagonal. And I like to go back, I don't know, about 12 inches, I'm gonna go back on this quilt. And remember how I said the seams are pressed in opposite? So here you can clearly see that this edge of border 
the seams are all pressed out, all right? This border on the other side, the seams are all pressed down, going down. So the sides are down, the top is out, all right? They have to be opposites because now we wanna get these to butt together. So I'm going about 12 inches back from my border and I'm gonna make sure that these are lining up. So way back here, because that helps in the lining up process. So I'm feeling that yellow seam, the green one, feeling it. Yep, all right, that one is butt together. Gonna to come on up here to the outside one. So because one seam is going one way and one seam is going the other way, just like when we're piecing a quilt, we want those seams to butt together. Okay. Now bring it on out to the outside. So I'm making sure up here at the top, that everything is lining up straight, all right? And right here, I'm gonna do the pinning again. I'm gonna get that one. Oops, I gotta scooch him up. I can feel that he's not fitting in there. There, now he's fitting in there. So I'm going to just prepare this by getting these seams to be butt together so that the it will line up all the way to the end, okay? can feel this one is not quite lining up there, all right? So the other thing is that when you're doing this, continually looking at your diagonal here, making sure this is at the diagonal, and now you wanna make sure that the quilt top, the border, is actually running straight. So the easiest way to do that is to get yourself one of your larger rulers. So here I've got my eight and a half incher. I'm gonna line that up so the edge of it is on the, edge of the border and I can see here that it is still running straight here. This to me looks like it's laid down quite nicely. Now using my large eight and a half inch ruler, you can see right here where there's a 45 degree line going from here to here. All right, do you see that 45 degree line? Okay, I'm gonna put that 45 degree line, get all my tools out of the way, on the edge of the border. Now look down here, back up a little bit, Bill, so they can see a little bit better. All right, I'm gonna line up the edge of the quilt with that 45 degree angle that ran the, all the way through my quilt. So it's, you know, that um, diagonal line. And then I double check things and I look up here, I'm like, all right, that's still on the 45. All right, and then sometimes I'll make it so that I can see here that that seam is going through that um, inch intersection and it's going through here and here and here and here and here. And that tells me that the quilt is still lined up at that 45 degree and that my border is not, you know, I wanna take, all right, I'm gonna push them up there a little bit. All right, now I'm gonna mark it. So I had to use two different pencils because I couldn't quite see one on one and one on the other. So this is the white boheme pen or pen, chalk pencil. And then this is a fabric pencil lead in a regular pencil because I couldn't find my other one. So I did have the fabric lead. So, all right. And then I take it all the way up there to the top. All right, now you see the sewing line. Now I'm gonna put some more pins in those intersections. I do not want those intersections to move on me. Um, if you're just new to the channel, this pin cushion might be going, hey, what is that thing? This is my pin cushion. I've got patterns and kits available on the website and the website is onpoint-tv um, where you can get that and the pattern and all my other books and stuff, all right? So now I'm gonna take this, pick this big guy up and we are gonna go back to the sewing machine. So Miss Athena, if you would, let me come around the back ends. All right, so for this, I wanna take off my regular foot and I wanna put on my open toe foot and then I wanna reach over to the over top of Athena. I wanna put my needle in the center and I'm gonna take my stitch length down just a little bit. Right. And since Georgia, I did not have an ender, now I need to grab a fabric to be my leader. Whereas if I'd had my leader ender situation going, it would have already been set up, all right? So now I am gonna sew on that line, all right? Now I like to sew in about four stitches 
then take a back two or three back stitches so that that diagonal that mitered seam is very very secure so when you're basting it or hanging it up or showing people it that edge will stay secure so just do a little knot but not on the very very edge because then it seems to pull the fabrics up and now i'm going to sew on the line and i'm going to again sew over those pins nice and slow Right here, nice and slow, especially since the pins, I put them in so I couldn't take them out anyway. They're in my, they'd be on my left hand side. All right, so now I'm coming down here to the corner and you can see those, that little nip. There's that little nip that I made there. Move the quilt top out of the way so you see the yellow of the quilt top with all these random threads hanging out. Move those out of the way. There we go. Now, when I get to this right there at the intersection, I'm gonna do it again. I'm gonna sew in and I'm gonna reverse. And this time I don't even go back. I just stay in reverse, all right? Then I'm gonna cut my thread off. Oop, that was a bent pin. Okay, so now it is sewn. Now we're gonna go back to the ironing board for the reveal so we can go, ooh, that looks awesome. Hey, Bill. <laughs> There's no football or anything on anyway, so there's nothing to watch. All right, so I'm gonna get the irons out of the way. I mean, for the rulers out of the way, rather. Bring the quilt up. I'm gonna take all of these pins out that I had put in to hold everything straight. All right, I think I got them all. As always, I'm gonna set my seam. I like to, after I've sewn a seam before I press it, I like to flatten it out by setting it. Now I'm gonna take my scissors and I'm gonna cut off the extra. Now this, I usually cut about a half inch seam allowance, and if it goes a little wider than that, I'm fine with it. I just, quarter inch just doesn't seem like enough, just cause, there, all right? So I have trimmed that all out, now back up, cause I gotta swoop this quilt open and bring it back down. Here we go. Okay. Then I'm gonna get some spray sizing out, whoops. I'm going to take my iron first, clear off some space, open the seam. And that's why I did the smaller stitch length. You know what? I said I did a smaller stitch length, but I did not tell you why. Sorry about that. You want a smaller stitch length because we are going to be pressing the seam open. And anytime you want to press the seam open, it is going to be less noticeable if you will do it with a smaller stitch length. Okay. So I do it that way first. Then I'm going to give it a little bit of spray sizing so it'll hold it in place then turn off the steam on my iron it's going to be a lot easier to dry the sizing if you will go with a dry iron on this and always got to be patient here i am patience pressing the seam till it's dry this iron does get quite hot too it's really very nice um and it has a 30 minute shut off which you know is kind of one of my favorite things what it doesn't have is the oliso when I took my hand off, remember, it would just lift it up. That was very nice. So I had to reteach myself how to use, actually flip up the iron. And the cord on this one, I think, is 8 feet. And the cord on the um, Elisa was 12 feet. I like that, too. All right, I've talked ourselves through until this is all dry. Now I'm going to flip it over. And there we go. Oh, voila, minus this random thread that's sticking out here. There. All right, there's another one there, but I'll get that later. There, all right. There is my mitered border and it is lying flat, all right. So that's how I do it. That's how I do my mitered border. So let's go back to the bye-bye station. <laughs> Athena's gonna come, I think. Um, oh, okay, they're going around the cables. There's a lot of cables that you guys can't see. Oh, uh, I'm over here, I'm over here. I'm over here. There, there was a lot of the studio maybe you didn't need to see that maybe you just saw. Like, did they see the tile that has come down because our refrigerator leak? Don't show them. Okay. <laughs> Where are you at? All right. So there we go. So, yeah, now I'm looking at that strange line, and now I'm seeing some words in front of it, too. I don't know what those words are all about. Yeah. Oh, that's, oh, this Talia just wrote something. Yeah, I know. It, All right, that was interesting. So does it stay up or just yeah, some of them? Straight up. Well, it'd have to be somewhere. 
All right, we've got to do some looking into. We had to do an update on the program that we use. So please forgive us for not being technical geniuses. Well, I don't know. I think Jean, Athena probably is. I just kind of fumble through him, but she's got this whole real job that she has to do while I'm getting things set up. So there you go. If you have any questions, you know that you can reach me at quiltingwithnancy at gmail.com. Please leave a comment below if you're watching this later and let me know if you got any questions or if you like it. Um, and I love it when you share this the video. So if you'll share the video, maybe even share, share the entire channel. Um, you know that you have some quilting friends that might just like watching the way that I teach. I really appreciate you watching. Have a great night.